in our next session, Elad, we'll welcome you back. Quick 10-second uh, summary. What are you going to be talking about? I'm going to talk about a personal open source project of mine that I've been hacking on called Progen. And it's a CDK for software projects. Okay. And it's called Project? Progen. Progen. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to bow out. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi again. Uh, so super excited to be here. Um, and I thought it, it'd be a, uh, this CDK day is, is a good opportunity to talk a little bit about this uh, little site project that I've been working on called Progen. And I'd like to think of it as a CDK for software projects. And let me let me tell you what I mean by that. Modern software projects uh, utilize a tremendous amount of tools. And, and actually, this, this list is growing every day when the bar is getting higher and higher when people want to build high quality software. If we take a modern TypeScript project, for example, uh, you would need uh, NPM and package.json file to configure your NPM information. You need to configure your compiler with TNS config. You have a bunch of dependencies with different types. Uh, there's a linter configuration and a rule set that you choose, unit testing framework like Jest, for example, coverage setup, version bumps, change logs, CI builds, automated releases, security patching, uh, license files, NPM workflow scripts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if, if you're me, like when you create new projects, it's, you want to actually get started uh, you know, off the ground with a, with a high quality environment. And so what I do is maybe go to a recent project that I worked on and you know copy and paste and clone my repo and tweak a few things and then get going with my new project. Uh, the, the art in this world is what people call templating or scaffolding tools or generators. Uh, there's dozens of them. Uh, Yaomet, React app, SAO, Webpack CLI, Mango, Risk, Plop. There's a new one every day. Uh, the problem with this approach, and it's actually a very similar situation to what we've seen with uh, the AWS, with AWS CloudFormation when we started the CDK uh, and with Kubernetes, and uh, is that this is a one-off process. When you generate your project, when you create a new project, when you call create React app or uh, clone uh, uh, a, uh, a repo with the Kubernetes manifest, you end up with a bunch of configuration that you didn't write but you now own. And in software, we call this a leaky abstraction because basically the, the surface area, the API that you need to work against is all of these configuration files. And each configuration file has its own style and format and, and you know, quality level. And, and so Progen takes the CDK approach to this problem and quickly use general pro programming uh, JavaScript or TypeScript, it's actually written in JSCI, so you can use any of the JSII program. Uh, we will be able to use any of the JSII languages in the future. Uh, this, is, this example uh, is, is, a, is a basic TypeScript project. And you see that it has this opinionated uh, sensible defaults, which is something that most CDKs share. Uh, all I need to specify is the name of the project. And then all those features that you saw on, the, on two slides ago, you're going to get them for free just by instantiating a TypeScript class. Uh, and you see, this looks like a CDK program, right? Like It's kind of like the app for a CDK program. You create the app, and then you call synth, and it synthesizes something for you. In, in the case of Progen, it will synthesize project configuration files. Uh, and obviously, you have rich APIs. So you can go and use your IDE and see the various options that you have in, in your TypeScript project. And so now your surface area is not all of those configuration files. It's a class, an object-oriented class, with properties and methods and initialization process and, and a, a rigorous uh, uh, workflow around it. So no, not only this is a, you know, a strongly typed class, uh, it can be inherited from and extended. And so for example, a TypeScript project is a node project, and a node project is a, pro is a base project. And so you can use inheritance, so you don't have to duplicate the, the logic. And so once I implement some node project, it automatically applies to all TypeScript projects. Uh, you can use composition and for loops and if statements and strongly typed APIs and uh, you know compiler support. And the most important thing, and I think this is 
you know, again, it's the same thing that uh, we saw in uh, Kubernetes and in AWS CDK. You can actually take updates. And so if someone finds a bug in Node project and submits a, a bug, rep, uh, submits a fix to that bug and we release a new version of Progen, all the projects that were that are using Progen can update Progen and automatically take the update. They don't have to go back to the original template and, and understand, oh, there was an, a security issue in this template. Now I need to apply it to like 100 different uh, repos across the universe. OK, let's see a demo. I think that's going to be the easiest way to explain this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create an AWS CDK construct library using Progen. Uh, this is the class hier uh, hierarchy behind the scenes. So you get a mental model of, uh, of what I'm creating. And so it's a pretty high level uh, project type. Uh, a CDK construct library is a JSII project. Uh, if you guys don't know what JSII is, uh, that's a technology that we use in the CDK to vend it to multiple programming languages. And so there's some setup around publishing to multiple package managers and stuff like that that Progen does for you. Uh, and it's a TypeScript project and a Node project and a project and so forth. OK, let's just uh, see if this works. I actually had some trouble with my machine earlier, so I hope everything's going to work. This is a live demo, actually. OK, we're going to take an example of a secure bucket, the simplest uh, construct uh, I can think of. Uh, super not interesting. So I'll start by creating a directory with a Git repo. And I'm going to pop it in my ID. It's completely empty. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, initialize my project. And so Progen has a CLI, like all CDKs. Uh, Progen new is uh, what you use to initialize new projects. And you see that it, it shows you the different project types that are currently supported. And I want to add as many project types actually baked into Progen. So it's like batteries included type experience. So you really can, you can just like do Progen new and you get the project that you want. Uh, but you can actually bring in your own project types, obviously. Uh, so I want AWS CDK construct. And I'm going to run it with uh, no synth. Uh, it will automatically synthesize, but I actually wanted to show you the, the steps. And so if I run it with no synths, you see that it basically just created a single file for me called ProgenRC. Uh, and it uh, bootstrapped my project, well, ProgenRC, with some required uh, fields. Because an AWS CDK construct library has some requirements, uh, as opposed to a TypeScript project which only, require, which only requires a name. Uh, I need the author information for JSII publishing. I need to know which CDK version or, I'm targeting. Um, and I need to know the repository, again, for JSII stuff. So this is basically the minimal AWS CDK construct library project. And now if I, if I call synth, and synth is basically just running Progen, uh, and that's the workflow. You basically modify this file and then run Progen again. You see that I suddenly get all these files. And I don't really know what these files are, right? Like as I said earlier. But the nice thing about this is that contrary to the scaffolding approach or the templating approach, these files are actually read-only. I can't change them. Uh, Progen doesn't allow you to change those files directly because there are an, an implementation detail of the project. Um, and so if I want to modify these files or update these files, I basically have to go through the formal API. And like all CDKs, uh, Progen also has escape hatches. So if you end up in this situation with your face in the wall and you have to actually change something um, that was not supported, then you can use the escape hatches to change these files directly. But uh, on the outset, we have a rich API for these files. What else do we get here? Just out of the box, you see I, I haven't really configured anything. I'm, I'm, I have a GitHub workflow uh, for building my project. So it automatically builds every time someone submits a pull request or manually. I have a release workflow that uh, publishes my stuff to NPM by default. You see, this is the only target that uh, that, that I get for that I get by default. I have dependent bot configuration. I have um, uh, an ESLint configuration. I have Mergeify configuration, which is this really awesome GitHub uh, tool that allows you to automatically merge approved pull requests with again with sensible opinionated defaults. Uh, I've got a git ignore and an npm ignore file. Those are harder to get right, to be honest. And we actually had some quirky AWS CDK patch, patch releases that were caused by misconfigured npm ignore files. So no touching npm ignore files anymore. 
And you see that all these files are read-only and all these files have this generated by progen signature to make sure that you understand it. You're not expected to edit them manually. Uh, you, you are going to check them into your repo. So you get uh, uh, kind of like a, an, uh, um, an idiomatic experience in terms of like viewing the repo. And you can also see some stuff like diffing changes. Let me, let me show you. Okay, I'm going to add all those files to Git because I want to show you what happens when I change something. Um, so in order to write my, uh, my construct library, I actually need some uh, CDK dependencies. Uh, and CDK projects have this property called, so this is the API for a CDK project. It's a pretty rich API. Um, uh, one of those capabilities is CDK dependencies, basically a list of CDK modules that my project depends on. And so basically, I'm going to need the S3 module in this case. Uh, now let's do, let's run Progen and see what happens. I'm going to look at the diff here. And you see, um, see, I can see my change here. But I can also see that my packet JSON was changed. And you see that uh, it automatically added these uh, modules as peer dependencies, as in regular dependencies with the right versioning. Uh, and now it also executed yarn install for me. So, it, so I actually get these dependencies in my project. And so I'm ready to build my code. Um, I actually have this code already build because I didn't want to waste time on that. So let me just copy and paste it for a second. This is just some sample code that was that Progen created for me. And this is the secure bucket. So it's basically a construct that extends S3 bucket and enforces the bucket is created with encryption. Pretty straightforward. Um, you see the structure here is actually pretty modern in a way. And if you have experience setting up this, this structure where you have sources here and the sources are out of are compiled into a lib directory and the test uh, and just is compiling TypeScript for you. It's not trivial to tell to tell you the truth. It's actually a pretty intri intricate uh, configuration, and Progen just takes care of all of it. Um, and so test. Let's see the test. Uh, I also have the test here somewhere. Let's see. Again, this is not where like, this is interesting. Uh, and so I get the test here. But for example, I also get like. Um, because this is set up properly, I also get automatic integration with Jest and, I, and, and VS Code. And so once I start Jest, the Jest runner in VS Code, I expect this to actually be tested automatically. But the machine is like extremely slow, so it's going to take like two hours. OK, check. Uh, let me show you a few other examples before we move on, just to whet your appetite. Um, let's say I want to publish this to, to Maven. So I have a Java property here. And this Java property here has a bunch of uh, fields. And so Maven group ID would be uh, whatever. And Maven artifact ID would be something like this. And Java package would be something like that. Let's see what that did. Bucket. I'm running get add again so that you can see the diff and then run progen again. Let me stop just because. And if I look at the diff, uh, this actually changed two files. So it added a section in my packet JSON to publish Java, to basically build the Java binding and, pub and, and, and uh, package it as a Java module. And then it also added a section in my workflow to release to Maven. And again, all of this is not rocket science, but who wants to understand what's going on here, right? Like, I can just trust Progen to do whatever needs to be done in order to publish this library to Maven and PyPI and NuGet or, or whatever. And there's a bunch of other stuff like, you know, release management and change log management, and um, and we can add more features. And every feature that we add is automatically available to to all the projects that are using this project type. So what's next? Uh, Progen is in alpha. There's a typo. <laughs> Progen is in alpha. It's very early. Uh, it's a pre-release, so expect you know some breaking changes. Hopefully with some some uh, notifications. Uh, I'm calling for contributors and also for maintainers. If if anyone's interested in you know leading this with me and uh, taking a more active role in the project, uh, please reach out to me. And I'm happy to to collaborate. Uh, I want to add more project types like. I'm super interested in the world web space because I feel like this can make a huge difference in this space. Such a mess, and there's so many opinions and tools. And so having 
a nice API and a nice strong uh, abstraction for that would be really nice. Uh, CDKTF uh, would be really great to add. And, and, and we can add more features across the board, right? Like IDE integration, richer APIs, integration with, with different GitHub capabilities or other CI systems. Uh, so re you know, reach out uh, on GitHub, on CDK Dev Slack, or directly on Twitter. Um, thank you for, so much for your time. All right. Well, thank you very much a lot. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, as a, as a CDK developer, I just saw like four problems you solved for me by having this. Uh, 